Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. So welcome to the Raspi TV Great Red Wire Strippers Review. For a long time I've been making do with these for stripping wire, which are an old automotive set of wire strippers that I bought when I was about 18. They're okay for big wires like this, but as you can see the holes are too big for the kind of gauge wiring that we need to use for electronics. So having got fed up with damaging my thumbs using a knife, I decided this week that it was time to investigate some alternatives. Now I asked various people on Twitter and this was a very popular model recommended by Charlotte and Mike and some others. Um, Somebody recommended something like this. Uh, ben from Phenoptics recommended this one. And at least one person suggested one of this kind. So in the end, what I did was I decided I love tools. I'm going to buy as many different types as I can find and review them all. And so these were £2.50 on eBay. That was, sorry, £2.25. That was delivered price. So really, really cheap. Um... These were about two something pounds from CPC, less than three pounds anyway, I've forgotten the exact figure. These I think were about 13 pounds and these were the most expensive of the lot uh, at around 16.99 I think or something very close to it. So let's see how they stack up against each other. So let's have a look at the cheapest one first, this was the eBay £2.25 delivered by Decton. Okay, so the design here, the idea of this is that this grips the outside of the wire and in here when you squeeze that grabs hold of the insulation and pulls it off. Let's see how they work. I'll try a thick piece of wire first. It doesn't work very well. It's not gripping, and the reason it's not gripping is because those jaws don't close properly. So there are a couple of people who recommended these. It may be that I've been sent a dodgy set, but they don't seem to work, either with thick wire or with thin wire. It's just not closing properly and not gripping that. There doesn't seem to be any way of adjusting it. This thing adjusts the depth of the uh, the pull, but it doesn't actually adjust the closing of the jaws, which is a shame. It just it's just they fail. Unfortunately, they don't work at all. So I am going to have to throw them in the bin. They're not. They were for the saving grace is they were so cheap that it isn't even worth bothering to return them. In the bin. So that's eliminated candidate number one. Candidate number two is the next cheapest. I think these were about 2.95 or something like that. I can I will print on the screen what the exact figure was. And these came from CPC. Now these are a different design. Quite an interesting design. Simple, traditional. I think what you do is you basically squeeze, you, and there's a small hole that regulates the size of the wire. You can change how small it goes by moving this for which you need a little screwdriver which is a minor inconvenience but basically you'd have to stick the screwdriver in there undo that and then slide it that way to make the hole bigger, slide it that way to make the hole smaller. Okay, They are adjusted for this green wire, which is, uh, you see it's all a bit wrinkly, that's because it's an untwisted Cat5 twisted pair cable, so let's... That worked quite well, let's try again. Snip that off and try again. It's actually quite hard to do this when you're filming. Mm, that works alright. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, that works. I like them. They're good enough. The disadvantage of them, of course, is that they are a little bit troublesome to adjust and you need to use a screwdriver to do that. So that's the downside. But if you're looking for a cheap set to do quite a range of different sizes of wire, you can do quite large wire. I'll show you that as well. But you obviously you have to set the adjustment on it. But you can do quite large wire as well. Uh, next pair. These are the Adafruit ones from Phenoptics. Different design. You've got specific, I don't know if you can see the printed letters here, you've got specific wire gauges and sizes. Standard wire gauges on that size and millimeter sizes on that side. And the idea is that you choose the appropriate hole for the size of wire that you want to strip the insulation from. So this is the Cat5 wire that we've been using and I think it's the third hole is the ideal one for this. That was easy wasn't it? Third hole, one, two, three. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Smooth, works really well. Like it very much. Definitely easier to use than those. Without a question. But they do cost a considerable amount more. But in the scheme of things, they're nice. And then the other nice thing about this, of course, is that if you want to do different sizes of wire, you don't have to do some one-off adjustment and then they'll be off if you're trying to do a different size wire. So you could do several different sizes of wire in the same session using these and you've, I think you've even got some crimping, crimping things on the end here if you want to do that. So yeah, these are really nice. I like them. Very good indeed. Very good. Good product. So now, most expensive, the Rolls-Royce. Is it a Rolls-Royce or a rip-off? Let's see. These are about 16, 17 pounds from CPC. They're made by Knipex, which I think is quite a well-known uh, company that makes electronic stuff. So they're a different design again, close that. And the hole is regulated by the distance that it will be allowed to close and you can regulate that with a thumb screw which is obviously easier than having to carry a screwdriver around with you. Let's see how well it works. I've already set it for this size of wire. Ooh, it's quite smooth. Let's try again. If you adjust it right, it works really well. Now, singing the praises of the Adafruit ones, they are very good, but and they are good in that you don't need to adjust anything, but these ones also can be used for larger gauges of wire without adjusting, as I did with this one. Let me just snip this black cable and show you. You just don't pull it down quite as far. So, you see? That works as well. Although it's not, I think, how they're designed to be used. They can be used like that in a pinch. So the disadvantage of the Adafruit ones is that they only have a limited number of, of wire gauge sizes. The advantage of the adjustable ones is that you could actually do use them with really quite a large wire. If you see how much, see how big a wire you could actually fit in there, you could fit something that was several millimeters in diameter 
um, and that one slightly less, but still you could fit some quite large wire in there. Certainly your household electrical household electrical wire is uh, is certainly doable. And with this one as well. You might even be able to do it with the Adafruit one, let's try. But I don't know. The holes, no, the holes are probably, oh, no, nope, that worked beautifully. So it does work. Okay, I stand corrected. So these can definitely be used for a wide variety, a wide range of wire gauges. These are slightly narrower range, and these are just for small electronics type wire gauges. I would say these are outstanding. So, if I had to pick one, could I do it? I think I could. If it was for electronics work and I had to pick just one, I would pick the Adafruit one, which I got from Phenoptics for about £13. The reason for that is that it, it just doesn't require any, readjust, any adjustment and uh, it can do quite a good range of sizes. If you want a really cheap one, this works fine, but it's just you're going to have to spend a bit of time getting the adjustment right and each time you want to change the size of your wire and you're going to have to carry a screwdriver around with you but it's less than three pounds so you can't argue with that if you want a cheap one this is a really nice piece of kit and I like it it's really good it's a little bit more expensive and a little bit more flexible but you do have to set the uh, the wire gauge and I think it's perhaps not quite as easy to use as the Adafruit one but nevertheless a very nice tool certainly if you've got other electrical work that requires larger gauge wires I think they would be the ones to go for but for electronics work I think overall the Adafruit one would be my pick of the bunch and the added bonus there is that it goes well with the set of SMD tools that I reviewed last year that I got from RS. I expect they may well be made by the same factory. Look at that coordination. This was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv. Thank you for watching.